Okay, I think that we are live. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, we're live and our microphone is falling over, so it's already starting well. Jesus. You'd think that after some months of this, I would have gotten the setup right, but no, I don't do right. I don't do right. Ooh. This is from a, a video where um, that I'll be publishing later tonight after the stream. And let's just say hello and say... Hi, my name is Kim Dias Holm, also called Den Unge Had Holm, and I make art for free use. Every Thursday I take a request from you guys and I draw whatever you want. And this time I made a poll uh, with three different creatures that may happen to be in Dragon's Dogma 2. Who knows? And um, it was Dragon. It was... What was it? Dragon... And Griffin and Sphinx. And the Sphinx won. Love your nails. Thank you. Where are everyone located today? Where are you watching from? And we, Minane is here. And if you see, she's got that cool green. She, he, it, they, who knows? Got, uh, has got that cool green text and that's because they are a supporter on my YouTube channel and you can also become a, su a supporter and that helps me a lot so I can make more art for free use. That's the whole thingamabob. Uh, ooh, we have some questions. I was just trying to find a, uh, a video explaining the little Uru, Uruburu circle, uh, circle that you often use in your drawings. Any significance or is it just a cool symbol? I haven't made a video proper about it yet, but there is significance. It is a, uh, an Enso, which I appropriated from uh, Japanese Shinto Zen Buddhism uh, 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 and uh, there is a let's say a religious significance for me but um, the way I use it is if I suspect that the art may have some sort of uh, spiritual significance either because of what I'm drawing or because of the process of drawing it and things that have gone through my mind then I sometimes put the Enso there in order to check with the fates to see or with chance or with the gods or with whatever to see if uh, I can keep the drawing or not so if I manage to make the Enso in one or reasonably one go, if it turns out well, then I keep the drawing. If I mess up the Enso, then I have to tear up the drawing. That's the rules. I didn't make the rules. I only made them. Hi. But you also have that as a tattoo, right? Yes. And if uh, the tattoo artist had uh, messed up, I would have uh, had to... Uh, tear up myself and toss myself out. No. But the tattoo I drew in the tattoo shop uh, also in one go. But yeah, let's do some art. So you guys voted for the Sphinx or a Sphinx. And we're not going to do the Sphinx from Egypt. But we are going to do a Sphinx. Is it spelled Enso? Yes, I think so. There, there are. Uh, it is from Japanese, so there are probably multiple ways of spelling it. 
Found you through Scott Kristen Sava. Great. Are we drinking tea? We're drink. I don't know what tea this is. It's um, some sort of sleepy time flavor. So if I fall asleep during the stream, blame the tea. Hey, from America. Okay, so shall we start with uh, doing a Sphinx? I think I'll start the Sphinx like this. How? How is that going to be a Sphinx? Ooh, that didn't help me. Okay. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. I think it would have said on the tea if it was chamomile. So, the Sphinx in uh, Giza in uh, Egypt is... A re seems to be a representation of a pharaoh and is a generic sort of guardian figure that you find in a lot of uh, Egyptian, around Egyptian temples and stuff like that. Um... But we generally mix it up with the Greek and also Middle Eastern sphinxes, uh, which are more of a mythological creature. I guess that the um, Egyptian sphinx was also a mythological creature, but... I haven't been able to find any reliable info on that. And that's the problem when searching about sphinxes, is you, you, all you find is Graham Hancock bullshit and ancient alien stuff. And the problem, I, I like a good ancient alien yarn as much as anyone, but the problem is that, that there are so much of it that it becomes impossible to find the actual factual information and not the shit that Graham Hancock dreamt up when he was on some trip. Whoop, whoop, halfway to a midlife crisis. Who, who's there? Ooh, 1983. I'm a 1980s child. 1980, exactly. So, yeah. This will end up well. <laughs> I still have not come across the Sphinx yet, despite beating the game. Looking forward to it. Dragon's Dogma has been uh, nothing quite like anything I've played before. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma is... Uh, two is great so far. Uh, I'll tell you a secret. I haven't came come across the Sphinx either, but uh, I, I searched for creatures in um, Dragon's Dogma and I got spoiled. So we're... Yeah, it's so, Graham Hancock arsing around, having fun right um, up t until the Sphinx racism comes into play. Very uncool dude, snake old salesman, yes. And that that's the problem of all the, the, the alternative archaeology guys. It, it's not that we don't... We need theories that challenge the current archaeology and the current history because... Well, 
a lot of the mainstream history is that you teach, uh, learn in school and stuff is wrong because it, it is old-fashioned and it, it is basically taking the narratives of kings as gospel. <sighs> but um, the fact that we need better history and better archaeology doesn't mean you can come in and say that, that aliens built everything. Uh, and I've been looking at images of uh, Greek sphinxes all day, so that is what I'll be trying to do. Today I don't have any reference because I forgot to print it out, but I think I can do a sphinx without a reference. I loved watching Ancient Aliens as a kid, very late at night. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I watched all of that stuff, and I watched uh, Fahrenheit, and I watched... Uh, 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 searching for Atlantis things, and, and I, I, you know, I, I absolutely love that stuff. And I was also kind of far towards believing a lot of that stuff for a while. Uh, not the ancient aliens part, but uh, th there has to be something more part, and a lot of the conspiracy part. And that's been very strange, seeing that, uh, you know, a ton of my leftist friends and me, after 9-11, started believing more and more of the conspiracy stuff, because there was, you know, there was a conspiracy going on, a conspiracy to invade Iraq on false grounds. Um, but then you started, you know, getting into stuff like Alex Jones and all of that stuff, and it led to worse and worse places. But it was still very much a counterculture leftist thing to to fall for these conspiracy theories at least in my group and then um things shifted and now it, it is a weird trumpy thing who would have thunk I'm so happy to live in the same part of the world as Kim. I have always time to watch draw what draw. I think he's I think I I think this is called draw what? I should know because I named it. I can rename it. Yeah, but anyhow. The reason why I'm drawing the Greek Sphinx is simply that was easier to find stories and mythology about. You're an anarchist, right? Yes, I am. So the Greek Sphinx is most known from the story of Oedipus. You know, the guy who shags his mother and kills his father. And one of his heroic deeds before he sh uh, marries his mother and kills his father is uh, that he um, solves the riddle of the Sphinx. And th there are two riddles that the Sphinx tell, and they are classic riddles. Uh, and it's kind of fascinating that these riddles seem to be at least 2,500 or maybe th more years old. Uh, and th the first riddle is what has four legs when it's young, two legs 
when it's adult and, and three legs when it grows old? And the answer is, there's no price if you win. You do one patricide and that's all anyone remembers. Yes, yes, it is. Poor, poor Oedipus. Uh, so that was the first riddle. And the second riddle is, two, there are two sisters. The first sister gives birth to the other sister. And then the uh, f uh, other sister gives birth to the first sister. Human, human, yes. What is a man? Yes. As a young man getting my degree, I love Joe Rogan and the fringe thinkers he interviewed. Watching him sink into conservatism has sucked. Yeah, I, I used to love Joe Rogan as well. I still, still think he's funny and uh, a good interviewer. I I don't know. I haven't heard anything from him a long time. But you, I, I, I fall for all that shit as well. This myth is wild, yeah. Night and day. Night and day is the right answer. So on the uh, first riddle, it was a human because we... Um, uh, we crawl on our for all on all fours as toddlers, and then we uh, then uh, I'm trying to pay attention to the drawing as well as talking. Then we walk on both legs, and then. We end up with a cane. This was before uh, self-driving wheelchairs. Do you have self-driving wheelchairs? Do you should have self-driving wheelchairs. Hmm. I like her face right now. Uh, and then the second riddle is of course that uh, night gives birth to day and birth gives day to gives birth ah! night gives birth to day, day gives birth to night that's how it goes and I think it is I love this myth because it is It is such a fascinating way to transmit these two basic riddles. Um, it's just uh, a lovely way to pack uh, pack this little bit of cultural knowledge, which riddles are, into this larger narrative arc. Uh, so, so you don't just remember the riddles because you're good at remembering riddles, but you remember them because they were the ones that beat the Sphinx herself. Dear Kim, I don't know if you'd be interested in this, but I'm part of a young person's rights activism group in the UK. Uh, we have an arts cafe. Would you be interested in coming to speak at one? Sure, if I can, uh, if we can make it logistically, I don't have, uh, you know, yeah, I, I would be very interested to, I, I don't, uh, yeah. I like speaking and I like uh, going places to speak. So so I would like to do more of that. Definitely. Uh, 
a riddle I heard in Swedish. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What is it? The more you take, the more you leave behind. Uh, lovers. Kim cancelled. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, I don't know. I'm really, really bad at riddles. But uh, uh, Ethan, uh, just contact me at um, post at denongeherholm.com and uh, my associate Christopher will answer you. <laughs> the ah is the answer to the riddle time or is it a whole steps Working overtime right now, and this was just what I needed to help push through. Good to hear. Except if you're working with something uh, important, then pay attention to your job. Damn it. A whole is the answer to the riddle. What? Uh, what is bigger the more you take away? Yeah. First it giveth, then it taketh away. So, we can do, we can do the riddles if you bring them. But uh, do anyone have any questions or or something to discuss? Uh, superb, I'm myself, I'm an 18-year-old anarchist black metal musician with autism and you have been instrumental in getting through my day today. So massive thank you. Thank you for sharing and for keeping on. Uh, and it is such a weird and wonderful privilege to be able to sit in my basement, draw stuff I like and talk out of my ass and then get messages from people who I've affected in some way. Let's see if we can focus this camera. Now it's focused, I think. Have you watched Invincible? No, I haven't. I want to, but I, I just haven't gotten to it. What do you think of socialism? We need more of it. It sort of depends on what your definition of socialism is. But but if your definition is uh, the workers' control of the means of production, then yes, we need more of it. Or unions, we need more unions. Uh, labor rights, we need more labor rights. Equal rights for men and women and trans and thingamabobs. Those are socialist opinions or uh, positions, and we need more of them. Do you like Rage Against the Machine? Yes, lovely band. I, I mean, I was... What? When is the first album? Is it 94? And I was 14, so that, you know, that was the shit. Uh, 
Or have you watched that one show about Cthulhu? Is there a show about Cthulhu? I haven't watched it. I didn't know. I'm, I'm so out of the horror loop because my wife doesn't like horror. A and being out of the horror loop is lovely because then the few times I get to watch horror, I get genuinely scared because I haven't watched anything for so long. Uh, I'm messing up the Sphinx. Are you a fan of Queens of the Stone Age? Uh, certainly a few of their albums. Uh, then I... They're one of those bands where I absolutely loved uh, their albums for a while. Uh, and then I fell off at some point. So yeah, I, I'd call myself a fan, yeah. Do you ever take commissions from a VTuber? What is a VTuber? I do take commissions. You can contact me. You go to my web website and ungehadholm.com and contact me through there. Well, there are socialist robots in an untitled PvE game, so... Okay. Do you prefer prefer a brand new brush? No, I, I mean... Look at this. Let's see. Does this look like a brand new brush? You can't see it, but it's not a brand new brush. It is a poor, old, abused brush. A VTuber is a streamer that presents as an anime. Anime, Wow. I've seen those. Um, I guess it, I, I wouldn't have anything in principle against doing something for a VTuber, I guess. I don't know why I should have anything against that. I don't know. Should I? Huh? We, yeah. So, so it, there are a lot of reasons why you could want to present yourself as a digital avatar instead of a real person. And some of those reasons are good and necessary and others are stupid so so you know, i guess it depends you know like most things it depends can i send you a reference photo to draw on a live no that would be problematic on a live. Also because I release all my art for free use. Um, and to draw someone else's photo without knowing if they actually have the rights to it. And then releasing it for free use so that anyone can download it and print it and uh, distribute it and even you know, change it and sell it would be problematic. I've seen a few VTubers with black and white or ink avatars. Fascinating. I haven't seen that. How would his art style translate to anime? Is anime -ish moving animated VTuber? I don't know. I would like to see that. I did uh, ask people to... All right. 
I did uh, ask people to um, um, <sighs> to help me create AI algorithms or train AIs on my art, but I forgot to follow it up. So I need to write a bunch of people an email and try to follow it up. Can you draw a bird zombie or no? Hmm. Maybe. I think this uh, Sphinx is pretty much... Is it done? It looks done. So maybe... I don't know what we'll draw now, some, but maybe a... We'll see. Let's do an ink blot. And then... Uh, I'm distracted now because I'm... I noticed I'm getting a bit of a... I'm having a bit of a cold and I'm sniffling and I don't want to be snotty on the internet. No one likes to be snotty on the internet. So, excuse me. Like this. Just incredible. You make it look so effortless. What had the second most votes on the poll? I don't know. Uh, I guess we have to look. Greetings, Kim. Love your art. Thank you. So... Um... We can have a look. Would someone have a look and see what was second place on the poll? I, I'm not sure that I want to draw that, but uh, maybe. And for the first time on a live, you see that I'm not doing a numbered ink monster bef uh, anymore. I'm doing the date because I can't keep track of the numbers anymore, and I don't do the Ink Monsters daily anymore. I do a few a week, but not every single day anymore. So that means the daily Ink Monster numberings are is dead now, I think. Dragon is the second. It's very close. Do you go live this time every week? Yes. Have folks said you kind of remind them of Merlin? Yes! Uh, do you ever do cyborgs, robots, or things of that sort? A couple, sometimes, but I, I prefer this shit. Yeah. Shall we see if we can do a quick dragon? It's been a while since I drew a dragon. It's been a while since I drew a drake. It's been a while since I fought my brother in the TV show Ricky Lake. That song went downhill quickly with an outdated Reference. Zombie bird with a dragon. Zombie bird with a dragon. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. We'll do like this. <laughs> oh, the dragon is already drawn. It's a complete dragon. I don't have to draw anything. This dragon is already drawn. If I don't mess it up, then it will be cool. I think I messed it up. Oh, shit. 
maybe Tlaloc. Yeah, so so the, the thing about doing stuff that requires research is that it requires research. Uh, and that's very hard to get done while you're streaming. So I would love to do more Aztec mythology and uh, all of that fun stuff. But um, it's not going to happen on a live unless I've already researched it. Like, you know, the reason why I, I knew anything about the Sphinx today is, you know, I, I have researched those stories before and I have, you know, I've heard of the Sphinx before. But I also uh, read up on the Sphinx and, you know, found images and all of that stuff before uh, the stream so that I was prepared. But with something that, that I'm doing live with you guys and you guys help shape the art as I'm drawing that then it is harder to do something that I'm actually prepared to uh, to do justice to so so Tlaloc is something we have to save for for another day I guess I haven't drawn um, any Ulster cycle uh, heroes or gods. Uh, uh, I don't know if I've drawn any monsters from them, but, but that would be higher chance of that, I guess, because I've drawn a few Celtic and Irish monsters, but I don't uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I definitely should look more into the Ulster cycle at some point. Research in mythology is a minefield. Shitty AI slop around every corner in that field. Yeah, so you usually you uh, usually don't have troubles with AI if you stick with, uh, you know, if you do image searches, type in archaeology as well, or in Greek cases, a vase or a sculpture. Then you will get a few, like, uh, garden sculptures and stuff like that, which is annoying, but at least it's not a fake AI image. Uh, I'm not quite happy with how this dragon is developing. You did draw uh, Goddess Kali, remember? Yes, I have drawn Kali b b a long time ago. I would love to do it again. What was your first car? I, I can't drive. I've never had a car. My wife now drives and has a car, so I probably should get a driver's license at some point. But I don't really want to. I don't think I would make a great driver. Yeah, I'm messing this up more and more. It had a lovely eye there, but it's looking worse and worse. I think maybe if I move the eye over here, yeah, 
then it's getting a little bit more of that menacing look. What kind of paint and art supplies do you get, usually get? Look in uh, the, the um, uh, description of my long form videos, and I think also of some of my lives, and you will find a complete list of different tools I tend to use. But I do vary it and I do uh, change it up if I can. Let's do a bearded dragon because I've not done enough of those. Kind of looks like Venom, it does, doesn't it? Do you have any tips on getting rid of art block? Yeah, uh, I should do a video again about that. But, but you know, uh, Ink Monsters is a way of getting rid of art block. And, and this is going to sound, it's going to sound wrong, but art block doesn't exist. There is no such thing as art block. Creativity, however, has naturally ups and downs. And like anything else, if you overuse it, if you use it too much, uh, it will get tired and you will get it down. And if you stop using it, you will become out of practice. So what happens, what people call art block is that they encounter, they've been on a creative upward where things are going well, and then they start going to a creative downward and their drawings start becoming crap and their ideas start becoming crap and then they stop drawing, they stop being creative. And then after a week or two or, or maybe months, creativity comes back. And then they sit down and try to draw, but they're not warmed up. So the drawing comes out crap and they think, ooh, I have art block. I just can't do it anymore. But it's kind of like if you you train and train and train to run a marathon and then you manage to run a ma marathon and then you decide to just continue running and it becomes harder and harder and harder. That's natural, right? And then instead of uh, just toning down the exercise, you instead choose to stop running at all and just lay on your couch and play Dragon's Togma 2 and eat chocolates. And then there's another marathon some months later and you decide, yeah, I'll join that marathon, but I won't run, a, I won't train for it. I'll just assume that I can do it. And that's what people do with creativity all the time. They assume that they can just stop doing creative things, stop drawing, stop painting, stop making music, whatever, and come back right as they were. And you can't, you have to ease into things and you, you know, even in a period where um, even in a period where you, you are creatively low, you should have some creative exercises that you can do, like drawing silly ink monsters that you don't have to show to anyone, 
drawing doodles, drawing from life, following online courses, following books, going to courses. Uh, educating yourself as an artist is a brilliant thing to do in an art block because you shouldn't expect to do it well. You can, the art can come out crap, but you can still learn. Let's draw this thing. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, thank you so much. You can give super chats. That is much appreciated. And the text says, for art block, try app oblique strategies by Brian Eno. Uh, I don't know of that app, but I should think that Brian Eno has good strategies for art block. He is a magnificent musician and composer and I have grown up with his music and uh, still listen to him a lot. What about digital art? What about digital art? Digital art is awesome and all the same things that applies for, for traditional art applies for digital art. What are your views on today's capitalist society? Uh, don't like it. I, I, I'm first of all. I, I more and more think that that it, uh, calling it capitalism is getting to be more and more a misnomer. Capitalism failed and died and gave birth to something new and strange. Uh, Yanis Varoufakis calls it uh, 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 techno-feudalism. I like that. I think that makes sense. Uh, Post-capitalism can make sense. Um, uh, surveillance capitalism. But, but I think techno-feudalism is closer to what we live in. And uh, yeah. My favorite version of the Joker would, would probably be uh, uh, Brian Bolland's in uh, The Killing Joke. Wonderful artist. I'll look more into uh, techno-feudalism, do that. Uh, I haven't read Janusz Varifakis' book I have read uh, some of his other stuff. Uh, I want to read techno feudalism, uh, definitely. My favorite, uh, oh yeah, favorite Joker was Brian Bolland's, but but uh, Jack Nicholson was good as a Joker. If you're meaning as an actor, uh, I I didn't like the movie all that much but I think uh, Heath Ledger did a, a terrific Joker uh, you know, Jack Nicholson's is uh, magnificent it, it is to cure my art block I just go outside to find inspirations and if I don't won't get any then I have some ice cream I think it's difficult to argue against um, uh, uh, Jack Nicholson being the best Joker and probably difficult to argue against Heath Ledger being the best Joker. And I haven't seen Joaquin Phoenix, but probably him too. But but it's very different Jokers. So So... I 
I got some art supplies lately and discovered new way to draw with pen shading. Excellent. Discovering new ways to draw is such a good feeling. And uh, I wish I could do it all the time. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. I haven't uh, seen the new Batman Adventures. I loved the Joker in Batman the Animated Series. Jared Leto was good. It was so such a awful movie that I, I uh, and a terrible design. I think you know you're allowed to say I'm wrong and to say why I'm wrong, but I. I don't think it had much to do with Jared Leto, but it was, in my opinion, an awful movie and an awful Joker. Uh, but I don't think it was Leto's fault. Is it strange to have a connection to the stars? No, I think people have held connections to the stars for millennia, for hundreds of thousands of years, probably. Jared Leto was absolutely terrible. I agree with you. He also made the design. Yeah, but 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 I. Uh, I, 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 I know nothing about that. It, it was just, it sounded like a bad production all the way. Who is your um, favorite superhero? Spider-Man. Either that or Daredevil or Wolverine, but Spider-Man. It, it is Spider-Man. Uh, 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 uh. Is there anything you might want to say to your young audience of 17-year-olds? That is a good question. Uh, I... I would say... Find ways to... Be yourself in a way that doesn't destroy anything for others either. And most of all, try to do better than those who are my age. Because... Uh, we fucked up. And those before us fucked up. And those before us fucked up. And we need people, young people, to do better. And you can probably... I mean, young people today are generally so much smarter and so much more knowledgeable and more reflected than my generation was. So you can probably do a lot better than we did. Just, yeah. Is Norway cold? Yeah, Norway is still cold. No su sign of summer here for a long, long time. I love Batman, in case you couldn't tell. I could tell, Michael. I could tell. I like Batman as well. Batman Year One is magnificent. There's, uh, I read a lot of Batman growing up. Um... Uh, 
Thank you for the encouragement and your views. It's touching 40 degrees Celsius here already. Ooh, uh, th that is, I mean, it is uh, less than 10 degrees Celsius here, uh, and it can drop to minus degrees still. Uh, but but uh, spring is so slowly coming, yeah. I like Adam West. Yes, uh, that was a silly show. But I was always uh, very disappointed with the Joker in the old silly Batman show. Never liked that Joker. The comedy was gold, but probably can't say much these days. What, what do you mean? Have you ever felt drained after completing uh, art piece? Yes. Uh, you should, and after such cases, you should relax. Uh, it is, it, it is kind of weird how artists are so incredibly afraid of taking time off, me included. But if a weightlifter set a new personal record, they would they would plan for recovery after that. That's simply what you do. You plan for a recovery. A and you do recovery, and then you do a deload week or two. Or you even take a complete vacation, and then you start easing into it again. You don't go full force, personal record, again and again, Because that, that's impossible. And, and it is more possible with art than with weightlifting. But what happens is, and this is kind of insidious, is that if you're working constantly and just creating art, 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 you don't see that you're starting to repeat yourself. And I, I'm guilty of that. Look, I'm drawing a dragon, mother. Why did I say mother? Ooh, is it possible to uh, uh, buy any drawings? Yes, go to denungeherholm.com and also, yeah, uh, use the promo code thank slash no, you uh, oh, sorry, sorry thank you use that promo code for 20 per 10 20 for some percent off i should really pay attention to my online store but i try to pay as little attention as i can i need to make some videos about that because we're celebrating that i've been 10 years on patreon and we're giving everyone a promo code so yeah uh, do that and yeah, go to let's see, then unge dot com. I don't know if you can see that or if the it got censored. I don't know. 
with the gold dragon. Can you see the link? It must have been a Freudian slipple. I mean nipple. I mean mother. I mean slip. Yeah, yeah. The, the mother uh, thing was. Uh, 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 I was trying to say something like, "Look, ma, another dragon." But then I fumbled it. And it became, it's another dragon, mother, which doesn't sound as cool, I guess. Mm, appreciate the advice. Thank you. Thank you all for hanging out and for having fun. And yeah. Why is this dragon standing like this? I don't know. But uh, it is. I think this. I think I like this dragon. I mean, sh it should have its wings out like that. But I, uh, but I wanted to draw it without the wings out. Dragons are my favorite mythological creature. Yeah, I think they're mine too. That are trolls. I don't know. Something. Okay. What shall we name this dragon? Another dragon, mother... F no. Okay. I think... I'm pretty much done for... This stream, how long have I been going? An hour, that's not too bad. So I, there was a question if I get uh, exhausted or drained after uh, doing art. And after doing these lives, I do get drained because, it, because talking, trying to be coherent and entertaining and reasonably honest, and drawing at the same time, and reading your comments, it's a lot to juggle in a poor head, brain, thingamabob. You did draw it at Asvelger. I did have drawn it at Asvelger. Uh, I did a very nice uh, uh, rendition of it at Asvelger. Mother Dragon, Mother Dragon. You're my favorite mother dragon. I'm not sure I can spell today, but you are my mother dragon anyway. Okay. Uh, before I leave you guys, do you have any questions? Uh, any final questions? Minani says, Kevin. Ooh, I should have called her Kevin, but she is Mother Dragon. You're ending the stream now. No! Uh, yeah, I think I am, because uh, I'm still a bit exhausted after the Inferno Festival. It's been taking a lot of time to get back to normal, and my normal is a bit bipolar anyhow, so, so it's ups and downs. Um, yes, if you do not want to answer this one, please, it's up to you. <gasps> I'm waiting with anticipated breath. Uh, but just wanted to ask you about how are you mental health wise? So, so uh, I am uh, bipolar, uh, and my bipolar is is generally a lot of long depressions and 
a lot of long depressions and then shorter periods of um, hypomania. Uh, hypomania. Uh, right now, I'm not quite sure where I am. I suspect that I am in a sort of a middle depressive period. Uh, but it's very hard to say because I overworked myself so much during the Inferno Festival that I haven't quite gotten on my feet yet. And that might be because I'm in a depressive period or it might be because I overworked myself or it might be because both. So, so generally I'm... Uh, Okay, I guess. Uh, uh, um. Do you find your bipolar cycles correlate with the seasons at all? Yeah, I usually get my longest and deepest depressions during summer. Um, so there is some correlation, yes. Hi Kim, how's it going? Hello Tobin. Um, did you watch Shogun? Not yet. Uh, do you know exactly how many ink monsters that you made? So, uh, my last numbered ink monster was uh, 1550 something, I think, or 60 something. So we're, we're closing in on 1,600 ink monsters since I began this batch of ink monsters. And before that, I mean, I used to do a similar thing that I also called ink monsters in uh, the early 2000s. I probably made a few hundred then as well, but they were crappier. What is the festival you attended? Uh, you uh, can watch a few of my videos about it. I got a fever, so I didn't manage to make too many shorts about it, but there will be some more videos from then. It was the Inferno Festival, which is a black metal festival in Oslo. Um, uh, Dimmu Borgir played, uh, Torke played. Uh, my highlight uh, was uh, Arthur Brown, the uh, the crazy world of Arthur Brown, you know, the guy known for I am the god of hellfire and I bring you fire. I want you to burn. He was, is 82 years old and he did a totally magnificent show. He was just... He was literally on fire. They set set fire to his head and he danced around singing fire. And he was just, just seeing uh singer with that much experience and lived life just take over the stage and command it and with such joy and gratefulness to be there. That is fantastic. I think that the gratefulness to be there is something you sometimes get it with young bands and then it often disappears and then as they get older it just increases and increases and I mean, there are bands that are super grateful to be there at any age, but generally there is there is a, a time where it can become sort of mechanical. And then, you know, at some point, if you like what you're doing and you get to do it until you're 82, then that is kind of magical. And when Arthur Brown was alone on stage and the other music faded away and he had his silver 
uh, or gold skull makeup on and stood alone with the microphone singing again and again I will sing with the voice of love the voice of love the voice of love that was just oh yes literally on fire truly inferno yes And it also, you know, fantastic to have this 1960s legend that that inspired, you know, Kiss and Alice Cooper and uh, Rob Halford and Ozzy Osbourne and just inspired generation the generations that became metal. And to have him at a black metal festival, at an extreme metal festival. And there's nothing me metal about his sound or music. And, and to just have him be so perfect for it and so vital and uh, yeah, so well received as well. I love your work. It's so inspiring. Got any tips or tricks that have helped you improve in the past? I feel like I'm getting nowhere with my work. Hiya, Norge. So tips for uh, improving is... I I did a uh, I tried to make a podcast a few years ago, uh, and one of the episodes that are still on my YouTube is called uh, "How to Start at Art," and that uh, that has basically my approach, which is play around, and when you find something you like playing around with. Or that you would like to play around with, but you hate doing, so you need to get better at it. Study that. And when you study that, get to a point where you can execute it. And if you have those three phases, you have play, study, and execution. Then you can... Play, then you can move around those three phases in any order you want and start improving. But it, it's not necessarily that you should improve everything. You shouldn't improve linearly like a straight line. That, that's not how you improve art. You should sort of improve like whoop this way whoops this way whoops this way so you play around if you're stuck with something you've been studying try executing it if you can't execute it try playing around with something else and when you find something you like start studying it and then execute it or play around some more those are the three steps that you sort of can 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 move about and start improving and also you know look critically at your own art not to say oh i'm uh so bad i can't draw but say like if i were to look at this critically i can say that yeah, the head turned out really good. This part turned out really good. Here is a little bit of a mess. I should have perhaps done another composition. I should perhaps have done a wing up here and then up uh, there. But the silhouette on the tail works. The silhouette's here. The whole position, it's a bit wonky. 
all in all, some things work and I've done better than usual. Some things don't work and I've done worse than usual. What should I try to improve to next time? Yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I personally feel metal uncomfortable because I'm more inclined to classical Ra Rabindra Sangeet. I uh, don't know what that is, but I would love to hear. But watch someone singing while on fire is pretty uh, cool. Uh, so Arthur Brown wasn't metal at all. That it is 60s rock and roll. That that That's what it is. It's always nice to hear people talk honestly about how they are doing from an ADHD perspective. I can kind of I empathize. I can definitely empathize with uh, ADHD. But I was diagnosed with it for a long while because these things overlap. Also, another manner to improve is not to dwell on the piece you are struggling with. Instead, find a way to improve upon it the next piece. Yeah. So there are periods where you should, if you're studying, then you should probably never make a finished piece. You do, there's no reason to make a finished piece when you're studying. You can just do sketches and sketches and sketches. Then you get to this point where you have to start executing. Because if you're not executing the art, then you never see how good you, how much you learned. So what I see a lot of people do is they will study and then they will start making what should become a finished picture. And then halfway into it, they will say, no, nah, no, nah, I, 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 nah, I, I'm this isn't working out. So, so uh, you know, it wasn't the right time. I had a lot of things at work and I was distracted by this and I, you know and then they will just continue making unfinished pieces as a, a as a way to protect themselves from having to see how much they've learned and in any piece of art you do there will be a thousand reasons why you could have done better. You could have done worse. It n Life never gives you the perfect opportunity to, give, uh, to make your art. So it comes out warts and all. So when you are have studied or have played around for a bit, execute, make finished pieces, warts and all, then make a new one, then make a new one. And have them be finished, signed, everything. And then study, play around. But you have to at sometimes execute the art and see how far you've gotten. And we all have excuses for why our art could be better. But it's not. We aren't as good as we think we are. We are as good as what we managed to put down on paper. Uh, I eat a bit of everything when it comes to music. Right now, I listen to Studio Ghibli music, mostly Yo Hishaishi. Uh, Studio Ghibli is, uh, um, has a lot of fantastic music. I probably uh, mangled the name, though. I worry too much and I don't know what to draw. I've been up most of the night. So if you have been up uh, most of the night, don't draw. Go to bed. Uh, start drawing in the morning. Start by doodling. You know what a morning drawing can look like. Let's, let's make a morning drawing. Okay, so you start your morning drawing. If you start your morning drawing before coffee, you start going like this. And you've drawn an ugly dick with your eyes closed. And that's the start. And then you start doing 
Woo! It's... Why is it Scream? It's Scream, except the guy in S Scream is tap dancing. Okay, good. And then you start doing, ooh, what if we can combine this and it's the Scream guy. I regret drawing that penis. It's a, uh, the Scream guy skateboarding on a penis. That's not good. Then you scrap that and start early in the day with the creativity, and that will follow you throughout the day. Uh, I know that a lot of people think they only get creative at night, and that is for the reason why it, it, your brain needs to start mixing things up uh, and drawing connections that shouldn't be connected, uh, like Edward Munch's scream, a penis, and skateboarding. And for a lot of people, that starts happening when they are tired after a day. But you can also start making that happen earlier through the day uh, and probably benefit from that. Uh, uh, have you ever worked on black paper? Yeah, I have some black paper. I have... The, uh, let me see, let me look. Is it rotted and covered in... Oh, that's wrong. Here, I can show you a secret work. Can you see? On black paper. It's not that way, it's this way. So, yeah, I work on black paper with white sometimes, but it's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I like drawing black on white better than white on black. Uh, 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 apologies if this poor stream etiquette, but... If you're currently looking for an idea, I know I've drawn two, uh, two things already. The music I mentioned is uh, relaxing and slow paced. Yeah, what did you call it so I can write it down? Uh, 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 where was that comment? Ra Bindra. Sanjeet. Okay, I will check out what that is. Uh, I am an indie game developer and my brain comes up with amazing ideas between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Yeah, and, and that is a habit. I'm not saying that you have to change that habit, but uh, for... A lot of people, it's both possible and better to change that habit. For me, uh, I, I used to have that habit, and that was a big part of making my bipolar cycles worse. Because I started working from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., to, then to 7 to eight to nine, then then I turned the the uh, uh, the day around again and again, and uh, that's not good. So if you can try to make have techniques to turn the day around and start your creativity early, uh, that will be helpful in the long run. But it's not something everyone can do. Some people do magnificent work and only at night. And so it's not, I'm not saying this as a blanket, everyone should get up at six in the morning, but if you manage to do that, then that's probably better long term. Uh, oh, let me see. Uh, okay. 
Why is... Oh, my computer is just messing up now. So I think that's time for me to end. Let's see what we drew. We drew a dragon. And we drew a sphinx. Thank you so much for watching me today. I will be back next week. Uh, for now, I'm stopping the Sunday streams. So it will just be Thursday streams for now. Uh, and um, yeah, it's been fun. Go to denungeherholm.com to buy original art or prints or merch uh, or support by becoming a YouTube member or sending super chats or becoming a patron member or most importantly support by using my art. All my art is available for free use. You can download it, you can print it, you can uh, make small trading cards and trade with your friends. Uh, and you can even sell it as long as you put my name on it. And figuring out how to use my art personally, by hanging it on your wall or putting in it as your screensaver, or figuring out how to make money on my art and actually doing that in a sustainable way, even if you don't give me a dollar, is supporting me. Because it's spreading my art and it's spreading my name. So if you're using my art in any way, thank you so much. And I'll see you next week. Oh, boom, 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 boom.